guys welcome back to tech dose and in this video we will look at the count the number of fair pairs problem which is from lead code number 2563 let's now look at the problem statement in this problem given a zero indexed integer array nums of size n and two integers lower and upper return the number of fair pairs a pair i comma j is fair if i and j are both within the bounds of the array and i is not equals to j and the second condition is the sum of the values at the ith index and the jth index must be within the range of lower and upper. Now before looking at an example let's look at the constraint. In the constraint section you see that the nums length is maximum 10 to the power of 5. So that means you cannot write an n square algorithm because that will make it 10 to the power of 10 which is greater than 10 to the power of 8 so it will not run within one second. So an n log n algorithm in this case will be good or anything better than n log n will also be good. Now let's look at an example for better understanding. In this case our given array is 017445 and our lower and upper values are 3 and 6. Okay. Now uh, the goal is to return the number of fair pairs in such a way that the, the first condition as we saw that i and j should be within the bounds of the integer array and uh, i should not be equals to j. The second condition is the ith and the jth uh, some value should be within the range of lower and upper. Now if you try to uh, generate all these pairs then what you can do is I can fix this as i and I can iterate for all the items on the right hand side by taking each of the item as j one after another. Let's say that I picked this one as j then my pair will be 0 comma 1 okay the index 0 comma 1. Now in this case 0 and 1 are not equal they are uh, two different items right but the sum value is 0 plus 1 equals to 1 the sum is not within the range of 3 and 6 so this is not a valid pair if you increment this j and go to the next item then you check this 0 comma 2 in this 0 comma 2 they both are two different indices so first condition is fine the second condition is 0 plus 7 is equals to 7 the sum value is 7 which is not in the range of 3 and 6 so this is also invalid now if you increment and check for this 4 they both are two different indices and the sum value 0 with 4 is coming out to be 4 and it is falling in the range of 3 and 6 right so that is why this is a valid pair so if you find out all these valid pairs then you may have to iterate for every ith index you will be iterating for all the indices on the right hand side and so for the first item check you will be doing order of n check for the second item check you will be doing order of n minus 1 check and so on till the uh, one check if you go to the second last item right so the total uh, complexity of this will be order of n square right because the sum of n natural numbers is n into n plus 1 by 2 now if you create all the valid pairs it will be 0 comma 3 index wise 0 comma 4 index 0 comma 5 index 1 comma 3 1 comma 4 1 comma 5 so we do not need to return this but we just need to return the count of all these unique pairs right so i hope the problem statement is clear along with the brute force approach now let's look at some observations in this case if you don't want to do n square solution then the first thing which comes to mind is why can't we sort this array right so if we sort this array then we can easily define the range which is following the lower to upper uh, values right lower to upper some values so if you sort it then then one of the uh, things which can come to mind is let's sort it and preserve the indices so if you sort the items where you have the first item as value second item is index then you will get this kind of an array but you know what uh, the first condition may be misleading the only thing it says is i comma j should be within the bound okay you can swap this i and j i less than j only means that i and j should not be equal okay but you might interpret it in a wrong way that i should always be less than j right it it is not like that you can assume any item to be i and any other item to be j so that is why we do not need to maintain the index because if 7 comma 4 is let's say making a valid pair let's say our lower value was 3 and upper value was 12 so then this 7 plus 4 will make a valid pair then even after sorting even if you don't maintain these indices and 4 comes somewhere and 7 is coming somewhere else still it will make a valid pair 7 comma 4 and 4 comma 7 are the same pairs right and it will exactly be counted one time because we will always be looking at the right hand side while counting fine so considering all these things we do not need to maintain index if you are even thinking about doing that 
we do not need to do that so i will simply sort the array and get the sorted items right so this is the first uh, point now the second observation is if you want to add two items and reach to a target then you can always find the second item if you already assumed the first item y will be equal to target minus x how it will be helpful here is if you fix this as the ith item let's say then you want to always find the start of the range and the end of the range right what will be the start of the range start of the range will be low which is equal to 3 in our case and the end of the uh, range will be upper which will be 6 right so if the first value assumed is 0 and you know that array at i plus array at j must be within the range of low and high right you know that so that is why the other item has to be at least equals to 3 minus 0 because 3 is the lower value right so what will be that item that item is equals to 4 how to find this 4 either you can iterate one item after another unless you find an item greater than equals to 3 the first item greater than equals to 3 will be the start of the range and also what will be the end of the range if the first item is 0 and you want to find uh, the sum to be equals to 6 then the value will be 6 minus 0 so unless you find an item which is greater than equals to 6 you will keep iterating and you will stop somewhere which is index 5 so you know that if you have assumed the ith value to be the 0th index then your start of the range will be index 2 and the end of the range will be index 5 but not including this 5 because this 7 is actually greater than 6 right so the range will be 5 minus 2 but if you do this iteration then for every item you might have to iterate for order of n items and so this time complexity is the same as your brute force because for every item you will be iterating for everything to the right hand side but you can do a better thing here because this is a sorted array so why don't we apply binary search and definitely we can apply binary search in this case because you already know the target item to search once you already know the first value so the first value being zero you know you want to search for y and uh, if the start of the range is something you are searching for then you will be searching for y equals to 3 so the first item where the value is equals to 3 or greater than 3 what is that in binary search term it is called lower bound lower bound of any item let's say for 3 it will give you the index of the first occurrence of 3 or if 3 is not present then the first occurrence of an item greater than 3 okay so in this case 3 is not present so the first occurrence of item greater than 3 is this 4 so it will return the index 2 now you want to find the end of the range as well right so the end of the range will be given by upper bound so in binary search there is another concept called upper bound and you want to find upper bound on 6 the upper bound on 6 will give you the first item where the value is greater than 6 and what is that first item where the value is greater than 6 it is 7 so the upper bound on 6 will return this index 5 now whatever value you get from the lower bound and the upper bound index you just have to subtract uh, this lower bound from the upper bound to get the number of items within this range what is the time complexity for finding the lower bound it is order of log n and the time complexity for finding the lower bound it will be order of log n as well right so that is why for every item now you can find out the start of the range and the end of the range in just log n time so for 0 the start of the range is 2 and the end of the range is 5 so the value I mean the count is 3 because the range is 3 similarly for this one you can again change the target because you want to find the lower uh, sum should be 3 and the x sum that means the first sum is equals to 1 so what is the target target is 3 minus 1 which is equals to 2 so if you apply lower bound on 2 you, you will still get this 2 okay now you should take care that the lower bound should always be applied on the segment on the right hand side it should not be applied on the entire array because what happens is if you are taking this let's say 4 as the ith item and if you want to apply lower bound then what will be the target the first value is 4 right so the target sum will be 3 minus 4 which is minus 1 so if you apply lower bound on this entire array for minus 1 then you will stop at this index 0 that means the first index having the value greater than equals to minus 1 and this will say that okay 0 is the start of the range but this is incorrect because 
if i is the start index then j should always be to the right hand side according to the constraint we know already where i is less than j right now let's see a dry run uh, to understand this completely so our lower value is 3 upper value is 6 let's consider this as the i and i am keeping an answer which is basically a counter of how many pairs have we found so if this is the i then you know what is our target the target will be uh, 3 minus 0 which is 3 this will be the start of the range so if you apply lower bound you will stop at this value 4 which is index 2 if you apply upper bound on 6 minus 0 that is 6 then you will stop at this index 5 so the range will be from 2 to 5 minus 1 or you can say that uh, the range is 5 minus 2 which is 3 so you will add 3 because there will be 3 pairs which is 0 2 0 3 and 0 4 3 pairs right now i will move this i to the second item which is 1 so if this is 1 what will be the start target it will be 3 minus 1 which is 2 so if you apply lower bound on this 2 on the right hand side on only the right hand side segment okay you should remember that so in this case it will stop at 2 and if you find out the upper bound target that means 6 minus uh, 1 which will be 5 then uh, it will stop at this index it will not stop at 4 because upper bound always gives you the in the first index having a value greater than the target value so it will again stop at 5 so uh, the number of items are 5 minus 2 3 so this will be added here and the pairs are 1 4 1 4 and 1 5 okay now if you try with the other items as well for this 4 on just the right hand side segment if this is i then you want to try from i plus 1 till the end so the target value will be 3 minus 4 that is minus 1 if you apply lower bound it will stop at this index 3 if you apply upper bound on 6 minus 4 that is 2 then it will also stop at the same index so if they are stopping at the same index means you do not have any pair therefore 0 will be added again if you try for this 4 on the right hand side segment for the target 3 minus 4 which is minus 1 then it will stop at index 4 and same uh, goes for upper bound 6 minus 4 which is 2 it will also stop at index 4 so that means 0 pairs and you can try for this 5 as well it will be 0 pairs on the right hand side segment and that is why the answer is 6 in this case that means there are only 6 fair pairs now we are iterating all the items one by one and we are applying lower bound and upper bound only on the right hand side segment in the worst case it will be order of n size and you know binary search takes log n time therefore the time complexity is n log n and the sorting algorithm being in place is order of 1 let's now look at the code if you are someone who is looking to prepare for top product based company within a limited time of just three months then we have brought for you both the dsa and the system design live interview training program the most important feature of this program is you get a filtered and condensed structured curriculum in-depth discussion of all the topics and my guarantee of your understanding one-on-one -on -one guidance with me and live weekend classes to know more about the training you can whatsapp us on this given number in this code we are given the nums array lower and upper value i will be finding the size of the array and sorting the array after this i will be keeping a counter which is answer and iterating for all the values one by one and finding the lower bound on the target value which is basically your lower minus num set i this is the start of the range and i will be taking upper bound for upper minus num set i and you see this uh, start of the range for the binary search is nums dot begin plus i plus one that means if you are pointing to the ith index then i will be doing binary search from index i plus one till the n minus one th index that means the last index so always do binary search on the right hand side because according to constraint i is less than j okay so that you should keep in mind and finally uh, if if your range is let's say from uh, lower bound to upper bound index then you can subtract upper bound and lower bound and get the number of items in between and those many pairs will be formed using the i as the first item okay and we will just be uh, keeping account in the answer and we will return the answer as the total number of fair pairs so i hope you were able to understand this if you still have any doubt then feel free to comment below and i'll try to help you as soon as possible like and share our video and subscribe to our channel in order to watch more of this programming videos see you guys in the next video thank you